Thank you so much. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about mail order chicks and them arriving to you via US Postal Service. Now, you're probably wondering how this is possible, so I'm gonna be explaining that as well as giving you some advice about ordering your chicks. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also follow me over on Instagram. Well, I just received these little guys in the mail. They're so sweet and cute and love talking. <laughs> and I received them via US Postal Service. So you're probably wondering how that's possible, how it's safe. Well, Mother Nature has actually made it very efficient and safe for us to be able to transport chicks via Postal Service. Here in America, we've been shipping baby chicks across the country using the United States Postal Service since 1918. Every year, millions of baby chicks are shipped from hatcheries, and it's not just limited to chicks. Ducklings, goslings, and other birds like guinea fowl and turkeys can also be ordered and delivered through mail. And the mortality rate of these chicks is really no different than had they have stayed at the location that they were hatched at. You might be wondering, how is this possible? When a chick is inside the egg, they have the yolk to use as a food source during this stage of development. At 21 days for chickens or longer for other birds, when the chick is fully developed, it will absorb what is left of the yolk. There's actually quite a lot left and this is taken up into the abdomen of the chick, kind of like a belly button. This yolk now inside of the chick will continue to provide food for the chick for two days after it is hatched. This means that the chick does not require food or water to survive for the first two days of its life. Nature has intended for this to be a way for the animal to survive while the animal learns how to eat and find food. This is also important for survival because oftentimes the chicks do not all hatch at the same time. Hatching can take several hours or longer and the mother must wait for all the chicks to hatch before leaving the nest. The chicks do not need to eat right away so there's no rush for the hen to leave the nest. It's an amazing evolutionary advantage. This is why it's possible to keep newly hatched chicks without food and water for 72 hours and provide them with a safe place to rest while they travel to their destinations. Many other things are accounted for during the process to make sure the chicks are kept safe and comfortable during this journey. Special boxes are used to make sure that the chicks are able to stay warm have enough ventilation, and prevent moisture buildup. Hatcheries will require a certain amount of chicks in order to ship because keeping chicks together in large numbers will help them maintain heat inside the box. The great thing about being able to order chicks through the mail is that you can find almost any breed. Besides just chickens, you can also order many other breeds of geese, ducks, turkeys, and find other birds such as peafowl, guinea fowl, and other pheasants. There are many different hatcheries offering mail ordered birds. I recommend not using hatcheries that will sell small amounts of chicks like four or six in a box because a large quantity is really needed in order to maintain body heat during travel and keep chicks safe. While getting five chicks is convenient, I often see these chicks arrive weak and die from traveling. If you aren't looking to get 20 birds, look for someone to make an order with. There are lots of local chicken groups on Facebook and you could probably find someone willing to split an order with you. Now when you order you will be given options about vaccines and things like that and I do recommend getting those for your birds. It's just a good way to make sure that they all survive especially if you already have birds the, that way the new ones coming in uh, won't pick up diseases that your flock might already be carrying. Um, or just, you know, through transportation. Now, depending on where you order, you might have to order early in the year. Uh, so for example, I ordered these guys from Murray McMurray Hatchery, and uh, I checked them recently, and they're actually like completely sold out for the year. I ordered these guys back in April. I actually got first availability and got them now in July. Uh, so they do sell out pretty quickly, especially with certain types of breeds. So definitely, you know, look into that early in the year when you're thinking of buying chicks. Of course, if you're watching this later, 
Uh, there's probably still hatcheries that do have chicks, so uh, just check out different ones. Now, do make sure you're ready to receive your chicks as soon as they arrive, so you wanna have food, water, and heat available to them right away, especially if you have some chicks that aren't looking too good, that are a little weak, aren't feeling well. The difference of getting them all this stuff immediately, uh, it makes a huge difference. So make sure that they're able to get food, water, and heat right away. I've done a couple of videos about brooders and I am planning on doing more in the future, but uh, that'll be linked down below. In a little bit, I'll show you the stuff that I had ready for my chicks for when they arrived. Now, another tip is to track your package and also call the post office to let them know that they're gonna be receiving the chicks. And it's important to be ready early in the morning to go and pick them up. Uh, watch where the package is going. Uh, for example, I went and picked them up early in the morning before the post office called me because I was actually following the package and saw when it arrived at the facility. And unfortunately, a lot of times they don't call you uh, to tell you that the package arrived until like later. Uh, so you don't want your chicks to be sitting there in the post office. Um, it's kind of cold inside and so just watch where it is um, and go and pick it up as soon as it arrives at the facility. Next I'll show you when I unboxed my ducklings and what I had ready for them. All right, so the ducks arrived safe and healthy, the little goose too. So the first thing, of course, we wanna do is get them hydrated immediately. So I get to offer them water and then go over uh, what it has and get them some food. There you go. There you guys go. And we'll show them the water right now. They'll get the hang of it. They just hatched on Monday. Today's Wednesday, so they look really good. And for some of them, I've had to kind of show them the water, so you want to try to get their little face in it. Oh, okay, see, that one hasn't gotten a drink yet. Now it's figuring it out. And you might just have to do this for like a couple. You want to make sure they get hydrated right away. Uh, when you receive them in the mail. And if you do that just for a couple of them, they'll usually see others doing it and figure out that they need to get a drink of water. But they all look super healthy. They're running around already, playing. Uh, the goose is already trying to eat anything that's growing out of the ground. I gave them a small bowl because, you know, ducks are going to get into their bowl and I don't really want them swimming yet because I want them to drink and get uh, those electrolytes and probiotics before they start pooping in their water. So now I think all of them have gotten some water and now I'm going to give them some food. And you can also add water to the food to make it a little bit softer for them to eat. Makes it a little bit easier for them to eat this. And also a little bit more appetizing. And I just used the same water that had the electrolytes and stuff. Um, I had to make so much of it, they're not gonna drink it all right now. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to teach them how to eat this because they don't know it's food but if they see me they'll get interested in it but I kind of need two hands so I'm going to put this down and work on getting them to eat Now, when you get your chicks in the mail, something really important to have on hand 
is this uh, Save a Chick products, electrolytes and probiotics. And you mix this in for their water. And this is for basically everything. Uh, it's for chickens, ducks, geese. I think that's uh, pheasant. So, you know, if you have guineas or whatever it is that you're ordering, mix this into their water. It's gonna help them get hydrated quickly. You know, they've been in a box for two days and haven't had access to food and water. Uh, so this way, their first water, their the first water they get is going to be really good for them. And they can sit in it and fall asleep. <laughs> Maybe somebody else would like to get some water. There you go. And that's really good for them. Uh, especially if you have some chicks that maybe they're not looking very good, then you definitely want to give them that. Um, I'm just giving it to all of them, even though they look really healthy and very active. Moved their food over to a bigger plate to try to get them to eat. I had to show a couple of them, but now they've all figured it out and they're all eating. The goose is so cute. It has a deeper voice, too. And, you know, typically people would put the chicks in a brooder when they get them. Um, I'm not for two reasons. One, um, being out here with them on the floor gets them more used to me. And I really like for my animals to uh, be as tame as possible and to really interact with them a lot and have them bond with me. So a uh, brooder... Um, you know, doesn't let you bond as much, although it's really important if you, they do need the heat. Uh, here in Texas, it's super hot, and honestly, um, I'm not going to be putting a light on these guys at all. Um, now, it is important to put a light on them if you don't have super hot temperatures. Here, if I put a light on them, I'd basically cook them. Unless they're like in the house and it's, you know, 70 degrees, then yeah, they do need to get a light bulb. But um, I'm keeping them outside. Putting a light bulb would make the temperature over 100, which would be very, very uncomfortable and could kill them. So they get to be out here in the hot weather where they're comfortable and they get to play. And also ducks are extremely messy. So we'll talk about like some brooder ideas for ducks in another video. But yeah, this is, um, they're, they're not exactly like chickens. And the goose is a lot more, uh, you know, attention demanding than the ducks. And that's, you know, typically how they are. <laughs> oh, don't fall. They're still learning how to walk. Some of them have tumbled. But yeah, they're so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.